Police in Riverside, California were called after reports that someone had stolen a Tesla from a parking garage. Apparently the thief didn't realize that you can track a Tesla from your phone. And that's exactly what the owner did. After calling police, he was able to follow the path of the stolen vehicle. Officers would later say that the owner did a great job updating their dispatch center with the real-time location of his stolen car. Based on those updates, a responding officer located the Tesla as it was exiting the freeway. However, instead of pulling over, the suspect led the officers on a high-speed chase. Because of the high speeds and dangerous maneuvers, officers decided to pull back. They then brought in a police helicopter to follow the car. But since Teslas are electric, the battery was getting low during the chase. The car eventually shut down and the driver had to come to a stop on the freeway. With no place to go, he had no choice but to surrender. The California Highway Patrol safely apprehended the suspect and turned him over to the custody of Riverdale officers. The 30-year-old Tesla thief was arrested on suspicion of taking a car without the owner's consent. In other words, car theft. He was also charged with felony evasion and probation violations. His bond was set at $100,000. Scoring tickets to see your favorite singer is a dream come true for music fans. And if that singer is someone like pop star Taylor Swift, people are willing to pay thousands just to get in. Possessing those tickets can even make you the envy of your friends. So to find out the tickets you purchased were fake can be a devastating experience. And selling someone fake tickets is not only illegal, it's also cruel and heartless. Yet that's what a man from Lewis Center, Ohio is accused of doing to a Taylor Swift fan. First he allegedly hacked a woman's Facebook account. He then posted the following message, I have four tickets to the Taylor Swift concert in Cincinnati July 1st, that I'm unfortunately unable to attend due to some pregnancy updates for my sister. Can be transferred on Ticketmaster. Message me if you're interested. Can you believe this guy? You've got to be a pretty rotten person to pull a stunt like this. Of course this message seemed pretty innocent, so someone paid $1,200 for the tickets. But once the victim discovered she had been scammed, she contacted police. Detectives then traced her payment to a Zelle money transfer account. They discovered that the scammer was registered to Zelle through an iCloud email address. Next they subpoenaed Apple to find the owner of the email address. This allowed them to eventually get the legal name and address of the suspect. When confronted by police, the man claimed he was innocent of the charges. Perhaps he figured using someone else's Facebook account would shield him from the law. But he forgot that he still had to get paid by the victim and that information is traceable. Police were able to review his Facebook chats where he arranged for the money transfer. They could clearly see that the payment went to his own bank account so there was really nothing else he could say in defense. Police said these crimes are happening more often due to social media. They offer this advice to ticket buyers. Always be aware of who you're talking to online. Look for common red flags of people that are selling things for suspicious reasons. Look for the information to match. In this case, the seller's Facebook didn't match where he asked the victim to send the money. That's because he was using a stolen account. Also, buy your tickets through confirmed vendors. That last suggestion is perhaps the most important one. These days, just about any home printer can produce fake tickets that look rather authentic. So there are plenty of potential scammers out there just waiting to take advantage of fans. Thus, it's always best to buy from a reputable source. According to detectives, in addition to fraud charges, the woman who bought the fake ticket could also sue the scammer. Another thing about these types of scams is that they affect everyone involved. That includes the person who owns the stolen social media account, which is how scammers usually operate. For example, a Chicago woman discovered that her Facebook account had been hacked and someone was using it to sell fake Taylor Swift concert tickets. She reached out to Facebook, but they never took the page down. Weeks later, she said that a woman came knocking at her door. It turns out that the woman had paid for the fake tickets, but they never arrived. She then googled the Facebook owner's name and address. 
Once she found the address, she showed up at the house to find out where her tickets were. That's some pretty scary stuff. Meanwhile, since Facebook had still failed to remove the hacked page, the owner of the account reached out to the local news media for help. But they could never get Facebook to respond. However, an Illinois state senator stepped in after seeing the report on the news. Within a matter of days, the hacked Facebook page was disabled. The senator then suggested that if you find yourself in a similar situation and can't get any help from Facebook, reach out to your local elected officials for help. It's important to be persistent. After all, you don't want some random person showing up at your home to complain about something you know nothing about. It's not unusual for law enforcement to give someone a ride home. And since you're riding with a police officer, you'd probably expect to safely arrive at your house. And you definitely would, if there were no other issues. But somewhere in Akron, Ohio, there's a man who wishes he would have simply turned down the offer. It was a cold night in November when police spotted a man at an intersection. He allegedly flagged down an officer and said he needed help finding the bus stop. Due to the freezing temperatures, the officer offered him a ride. The man gladly accepted the ride from the nice officer. He also learned a valuable lesson that day. Because when he got into the police car, the officer checked the man's information and found an outstanding arrest warrant. You may wonder why the cop checked his identification. Well with so many people walking around with outstanding warrants, police have discovered that these random methods seem to yield positive results. Granted, most states have laws that protect your rights. That means a police officer can't demand to see your identification unless they have reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed. But this situation was a little different. The police didn't stop him and ask for his ID. He stopped the officer and then accepted a ride in the patrol car. It wasn't clear what methods the officer used to identify the man, but he was arrested. During a search of the suspect's bag, the officer found a temporary driver's license, social security card and debit card. None of those items belonged to the man they had in custody. He told officers he found the cards on the side of the road and intended to return them to the owner. Of course, that didn't stop him from going to jail for his outstanding warrants. It wasn't the way he expected his night to end, but at least the jail has heat.